Today on the breakfast, as the race to the 2023 presidency gathers momentum, presidential hopeful of the People's Democratic Party, Dele Momodo, joins us to discuss developing issues. Also on the breakfast, the Department of the State Services, DSS, warns about plans by criminal elements to return Nigeria to the pre-2015 era. Remissioned of improvised explosive devices attacks on soft and hard targets in parts of the country. How do we get on top of the security threats? And like always, we will be reviewing all of the top stories making headlines across major dailies. Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messia Bobo. Beautiful Wednesday morning. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thanks for staying with us. We just head up straight to uh, top uh, trending. There's a whole lot going on. The Nigerians are not really learning lessons uh, when it comes to Ponzi schemes and investment plans. And right now we're talking about a particular one which just um, went under a football investment platform crashes. You know, Messi, we've talked about this um, investment plans and Ponzi schemes in Nigeria. And Nigerians are... I won't say le the less wiser because over time, people lost money to MMM and various investment plans, and yet they seem to have not learned lessons. This one is about a particular investment um, plan, and uh, they claim to have some um, affiliation with Manchester City. <laughs> and Nigerians will just fall hook, line, and sinker, and now just put huge money into such plans. So I'm, I'm hoping that we're able to, you know, run that particular tape, or okay. as it were, as, as the video where you have a lot of persons reacting and commenting, and those who have actually fallen victim, but you know, still staying with you and agreeing to the fact that we have not decided. I, I think oh. it's a decision. It's something that uh, we have not been very deliberate mm -hmm. to learn from uh, what's Previous actually going on. And so all of the experiences, but it boils down to one thing. And it's also the mentality of the quick, you know, get quick, quick, quick rich. Syndrome, yes. Greed, like you have uh, said just, over time. Just, just get rich quick, you know. So this is actually a way. And so mm. people will invest. And you know the thing that was really sad for me, because I, I'm not sure if we're able to put it out. I'm sure we're, we're going to see all of that. Okay. So one of the persons, uh, you know, one of the investors who reacted was saying that don't put your money here again. <laughs> You know, just look for another investment to put your money into. Another one. Really? <laughs> it doesn't even make any sense. So I'm laughing because it's laughable. And really? well, that's because we have refused to actually learn. Lessons. And usually we say that we cannot go by saying that experience is the best teacher. But we say leveraging on others experience yes. is the best feature and that's actually the new norm now mm. but you know for us it's a different thing so we have to but just just want to suffer. express it for suffer. themselves okay we understand that we have the video let's see the video then we'll come back and talk some more it's a silly tour and I told her this. So there are people outside. Everybody is sorting out for their money. Everybody wants their money. People are here. They did not allow everybody in entry into the building. So they, they say we should write our name outside. They will be calling us one by one, which is a delayed strategy just to keep us outside and so they can do what they want. All right, guys. So we all see what is going on with 86 FB or 86 W, whatever which we think now. All right. Now people have been unable to withdraw. So please, nobody should deposit money in 86 FB or 86 W. Nobody should deposit money in it anymore. All right. Personally, I feel this is the end of 86 FB. This is the end of it. All right. It's no longer a safe investment. Don't look for another investment where you could put your money inside, all right? That time don't come, and that time don't they go. Are you actually serious? <laughs> what advice is putting out there? <laughs> Seriously. When they are legit investment plans, fine, they might have um, little uh, return on investment. You have commercial papers, we have bankers' acceptances, we have, okay, time deposits and all of that. Fine, you might not really get, uh, you know, the quick fix syndrome or maybe the maybe 300% uh, returns like most of these uh, Ponzi schemes promise Nigeria. But the fact is that um, why are we not learning lessons? No, so because, first of all, this, um, this platform still come as in... Uh, they don't come as 
a Ponzi scheme. They don't come out and say, hey, we're a Ponzi scheme. Mm. Well, if you look at the operations and the activities, then you would actually decipher that it's a Ponzi scheme. First of all, you need to understand that money doesn't work. I say that all the time, not because, you know, probably I'm a financial expert, but I've actually stumbled on you know, read a couple of books about financial investment and, you know, how money works. Mm. It doesn't work that way. Mm. So it's still driven by the fact that a lot of people want to blow. That's <laughs> what it is. You want to become mm. like, you know, a Ted dollar. You want to become the Dangote of Nigeria. But you need to understand that Dangote didn't start today. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you need to understand how money works. And so um, we're all driven by the mentality of just get rich quick and just make the money blow. And that's it. And that's why people don't pay attention you know, to um, details. That's all you say. So how do we constantly fall prey for all of this? So you had MMM that was really very uh, prominent. <laughs> so you've had, what's the other one we talked about last week again? Ah. Funny names. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember uh, the name. Uh, 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 what, uh, what, what did you call it? <laughs> <laughs> the names are even funny. But how do you tell me that you are linked uh, it, it, to it Manchester is... City? I'll not do my own due diligence. I'll not do my own research, you know. These things are it is just how gullible we are. And as, as, as much as we constantly say we're the smartest people on planet Earth, mm. I don't know if you have research backing that. But we constantly claim that we're very smart people. Nigerians are smart. Nigerians are resilient. Nigerians are everything. You know, the best persons and best people to be. Not to say that we're entirely nonsense, right? So you see you have a couple of persons who have their minds working together. But I, I, I think that, you know, the ideology of wanting to blow and make quick money is what is actually driving a lot of people to putting up. So really, what would be the issue of attraction? Because I'm looking at it, it might just be the return on investment. And so when you look Most at the return on investment... Most of them are usually outrageous. And they cannot exactly. sustain them. So how do you tell... So, so, so usually the, the point of attraction, and that's what this um, schemes actually come. Like I, I already mentioned, nobody will come out and tell you, hey, I'm a Ponzi scheme. They don't do that. Mm -mm. They don't do that. But if you look at, when you look at it, how would someone tell you that, see, so you put um, you know, a hundred thousand, and in three days you're going to get like how much again? Maybe you're uh, going to get fifty thousand. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's too good to be true. So you uh, need to begin to query all of that. It raises a flag, but people don't pay attention. A whole and a lot of people just think that oh, because it's um, so you're going to get fifty. I mean that's so, so good. That's a great investment. Chunking your money, just push it in, and you want to get the money quick. Mm -hmm. But you see, after a very long time, you know it crashes because it's it not. It, it doesn't follow the principle of how they money always crash works, because they so. can't sustain. You know, because the fact is that maybe we might do a particular session or maybe uh, <laughs> on um, financial literacy. You know, so people can get educated. No, maybe we really should, so people can actually get educated about. No, no, I, don't, I don't even plans. think that. So because, it would be a great idea. Mm. It's fantastic. We will constantly do our bead. Mm. And that's why we exist, yes. right? But I don't even think that we will get to that point. Because everybody everybody wants to... Don't you want to blow? No, maybe not blow out of my sight. No, I'm already big. <laughs> so I don't want to blow up more than you. Because the truth is that simple investment... If it's not hinged on any particular, maybe, service or product, at the end of the day, where is the money coming, coming from? from? People should understand this little basis. Even if you're investing in banks... Um, acceptance and everything. Okay, it is a service. The banks actually invest and they make returns and that's how they pay you. But this time around, uh, you're just uh, putting money into a, a, a Ponzi scheme. Uh, they'll tell you that in 30 days uh, you'll get uh, this particular amount. What are, how are they making the money or the returns? They're getting it from other people. So they it's more like crowdfunding. Them. Yes, they collect from other people. At the end of the day, it will not sustain itself. It will eventually crash. Let's learn some lesson or two about this. No, I'm not going to stay never, on this. We will never learn any lesson. Ah, well. Mm. No, no, I'm serious. We'll continue in this circle. And it will, be just be, it will just be laughable. Okay. Um, but okay. we need to move away well, from Well, we have stuff. to move on. So that guy just advising people to go into another... Okay, let me not, let me not dwell on that for now. Away from that. <laughs> away from that. Uh, the governor of Cross River State, Ben Ayade, has actually declared his presidential uh, bid. But before we talk about it, uh, let's see the declaration and what he said uh, just yesterday. Leadership is given by God. God anointed President Muhammad Buhari as the leader of our party and the leader of this country at this time. It is politically insensitive. It is completely non-African. It is not Afropolitan to walk into a man in the lofty of his seat and tell him I want your seat. I think by African morality, 
if we were to customize democracy to reflect the communities that are specific to Africa, it will require a consultation to seek a direction than to declare a position. So I didn't come before the President Muhammadu Buhari to seek to declare to run for the office of the President of Nigeria. I came before him to seek his direction for me to understand how to align. All right, welcome back. Uh, that's uh, the governor of uh, Cross River State there, Ben Ayed Ayade, addressing newsmen after he sought consultation or consultancy, as it were. And most of these people, they have to start paying consultancy fees because over time, you, you hear and see that they're either consulting with IBB, OBJ, uh, Abdul Salami, or they said they want to gain from their years and wealth of experience. But uh, Mercy, your wonderful governor is actually uh, declaring his presidential bids, and um, you know, he's said that one interesting thing he said is that he's not actually, uh, he didn't actually uh, go there to see the president to tell him that he wants to be his successor, but just to get his nod. And he said something again that uh, eventually if his party were to uh, choose uh, the former uh, president, uh, good luck Jonathan, he would uh, throw his full support behind him. I mean, <clears throat> first of all, it's a uh it is very interesting that everyone has a right, you know, to be part of, True. you know, the race. So we all have a right. I mean, as a matter of fact, I might just probably want to declare my interest <coughs> to run for Oops. presidency. Why are you clearing your throat? So, yeah. I mean, just to say that it's a constitutional right True. for everyone. Yes. So you have a right to vote and be voted for. As long as you meet the requirement, you're not a criminal, even though you have several criminals and that the law the have money. not caught up with. Uh, so you have a lot of people who have you know, offended the state and have done a lot of things, but the law is yet to meet up with them, and so that's why they're working as free men. But <clears throat> on the other hand, uh, I think that it's a lot for the APC right now, and so it's quite interesting that you see a lot of people being part of the race. In his statement, he's saying he doesn't want to succeed him, but he understands how to align them. So it, I really don't know what the agenda is. There might probably be an agenda that we do not understand with the mm. APC. Uh, you have a lot of persons. He's saying that he's gotten the approval of Mr. President to align his interests, and that's why he's putting it out there. So uh, what's the... It's politics, and politics is about interest, and so uh, interest would always be it. It's just the game, so people would play that game. It's okay. The president wouldn't have said to him, I'm not holding brief for the president, but the president would not even tell him you not, know, to, not run. to run or to sure. run, and so we all need to understand all of that. But it would come back, you know, to the party politics. And so, like people always say, uh, at what level? So right now, you find out that the APC is still grappling whether or not we're going to go via the consensus or mm -hmm. we're just going to have direct or indirect primaries. It's totally d dependent on, you know, the parties at the party level to decide who becomes yes, a flag bearer. Yes. And on a larger scale, you also know that the party would have an influence to some extent, but really, uh, fingers are really crossed. So maybe when we get to that point, we'll talk about it. But some persons have rightly stated that, I mean, if you look at cross the slate, you can't really, um, you know, begin to put the pens, I mean, put the dots and cross the T's as regards some of the policies that he has put out. So it is totally... Um, Embarrassing for some people to say that you have him saying, I want to become president. What have you done? Let's even begin to look at your antecedent at the state level. What's going on? What's the, you know, the, the level? He, he, he sounds, uh, you know, very... Um, ambitious? No, no, no. Over, nobody can be over vicious. Like I rightly mentioned, yeah. uh, you could also, you know, decide that you want to become president. So it's, it's okay. It's, it's just a normal thing. The constitution has not limited anyone. And so the party would decide who becomes a flag bearer. And maybe when we get to that point, you know, uh, we'll definitely about. talk about, you know, the ambition of um, uh, Governor Ben Ayadi of Cross River State. But in the meantime, fingers crossed, and let's see what the party does. Yeah, and I know before before time or before long, uh, we will get to see more declarations. A lot of people, you know, coming out to declare their interest. And uh, the thing, the question for me would be: What's your pedigree? Uh, what history do you have? What have you done at um, the level that you are at at the particular moment? Uh, yeah, some people they have never really had any. Uh, connection with uh, governance, uh, with politics, and yet they say, uh, 
uh, they understand the terrain and they just uh, want to, you know, live, you know, that uh, lifelong ambition of wanting to be president. Like you said, uh, the parties will eventually uh, decide uh, who would uh, be bearing the flag uh, and to contest uh, come 2023. Let's move away from Ben Ayadi and his presidential bid. There's also a video uh, trending right now. Maybe we'll just take it and we'll come back and talk about it. It's about uh, the Nigerian hunters and um, the Hunters Association, they were, you know, courting the lady's hair. No matter what she has done, nobody has the right to just court your hair just like that. And to the glare of the public, it is so embarrassing. What could she have even done? I mean, who gave them such rights? Uh, how come they could just go about uh, doing whatever they feel, you know, when we have laws, when we have uh, a democracy? Because people cannot just be tormented just like that. Mm. We were just hoping that, you know, uh, so, so we have a long way to go, just before yeah. I get into that. We have a long way to go as a people and as a country, and we constantly talk about, you know, police brutality and how the police have manhandled Nigerians over time. We see that, we complain, we have been speaking about it. One of the reasons why you have the hashtag ancestors protest. But if you look at us as a people, we're not even different from the police. Yeah. I mean, we're just, we're just acting irrational we're acting all the time. so what is even the the moral justification to begin to demand it's not a justification for the police right now but i mean let's be very realistic here right here so you begin to ask yourself what is the difference between the nigerian people and you know the behavior of the men of the nigerian police the difference is just the because Nigerians. they have the uniforms mm -hmm. wearing yeah, and so we're not just very they live here, they that. were born here, so they right? actually drink the same water, so they act like Nigerians would ordinarily. Yeah? So it, it just brings us back to the fact that as a people, we do not understand the rights that we have. Maybe we don't understand. Most we have a long way right. to go with orientation, with um, you know, educating the people to understand the basics. Uh, it's that part. It's in the constitution. The people need to understand. The people have a right. I mean, that's too personal, and that. That's very, very archaic in 2022 yeah. that you have this. With the, all of the consents, I mean, if you say they're the Nigerian hunters, we were hoping that they will be hunting animals or <laughs> probably even hunting animals might at some point be a crime. The the but probably look at the security games. consent. Mm. Why don't you channel your energy? So how does the color of a hair of an individual... If she decides you know, to even go um, redhead, blonde, brunette, it is her personal lifestyle. It is her so, business. So because at the end of the day, when you look at security threats, you talk about the fact that the, someone would be a threat if um, you know your peace and all of that has been questioned. Now, mm -hmm. you having a blonde hair, I could decide to have a blonde hair. I could decide to do whatever I want to do with my hair. As long as it doesn't threaten, it, it's You're not a threat to national peace and security. Mm. And so what was done is totally barbaric and very archaic in 2022. I don't want to begin to say the 21st century because we have actually over... <laughs> but, you know, yesterday, someone who's actually from Bainway State, a very popular person said, oh, Bainway is backwards. <laughs> Always in the news for the bad reasons. I mean, look at it. You know, you still have a lot of security concerns right there. So why don't this they individuals the channel issues. their energy to the issues? It shows you we're a reflection of who we are. I mean, you see our government, it's just a reflection of we you constantly see what we pay attention to. Issues that are not even of national interest or concern. And that's what we usually channel our energies to. And so you see policies don't affect it. Big on top of the you know, anyone who wants to exact their energy and power should look at security issues we have the boko haram we have the bandits you have the all sort of criminal element terrorizing the peace and integrity of the people and that should be the focus so and if you think that you have a lot of energy randomly. maybe you channel that you know just go channel your energy it's, towards it's quite that unfortunate because that we, we have, have to deal with all of yes this. we have a whole lot uh, bugging us as a people so we don't really need uh, to be tormented we don't need to be brutalized that uh, when we know the issues are plaguing us every day let's not add to our our worries, let not add to our plagues because uh, we could do better. Nigerians need some sort of relief soccer, so we don't really need to add more. Uh, how do they say it? What's the word? Add uh, what? Uh, pork, uh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we talk about injury or something, or maybe petrol to the fire or whatever. The thing is that uh, let's just channel our energies. If we're saddled with the responsibility of uh, hunting or maybe trying to do internal security, let's focus on that. Let's go to the forest, let's go to the bushes and hunt down the games and, of course, uh, those terrorizing Nigeria and uh, maybe your state, Ben. But don't take it out on some girl just because she decided to uh, make her hair blonde. She might even look very good in that. <laughs> okay, that's another <laughs> conversation. Well, that's so much we can take on Top Trending this morning. We'll definitely return tomorrow with more interesting uh, conversations, generating reactions in different spaces. In the meantime, let's get back. And when we return, we'll be looking at the pages of our national dailies. Please stay with us. <laughs>